Hi, good morning. This is Robin Bremer. And today I am continuing our series on praying in tongues. Uh, that is for you and it's for today. And today we're going to go to Ephesians. I mean, I'm sorry, that was yesterday. Uh, Philippians 3.3. 3. It says, um, okay, let's start at 3.1. Finally, my brother, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same thing to you is tedious, but safe it, for it's safe for you. Uh, beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of mutilators, for they are cert for we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Jesus Christ, and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, and then he goes on to brag about why he could have confidence in his flesh, because um, he was circumcised. He's from he's from the stock of Israel, so he's a he's built good. He's a, he's a from the tribe of ben, Benjamin. He's from a Hebrew of Hebrews. Um, he was zealous for the church. He followed all the law. He persecuted the church. He um, so so on and so on. He's bragging why he should have he could have confidence in the flesh, and he's telling you not to have confidence in the flesh, but confidence in the spirit and in confidence in Jesus Christ. So I want you to look at three three. Uh, for we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit. Okay, so they wor so we worship God in the spirit. He's talking about all of us, and he's also talking about Jews. Rejoice in, in Jesus Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. Okay. So when you're praying for somebody, our, what we're talking about is praying in tongues for you and for today. So when you're praying for somebody, whether you're praying in a prayer line, whether you're praying at a grocery store, praying at home, or praying over the phone, or praying for your friend, you don't have all the facts. They don't know, have all the facts. And they might think they have all the facts. They might think they know how to explain what the doctor said, or they might know how they feel. Uh, but the fact is, if we rely on our flesh, if we have confidence on our flesh, on our own ability to reason and logic and think out what this person needs in prayer, then we are having confidence in our flesh. And it tells us right there in the Bible not to have confidence in our flesh, uh, but we are, but to pray in the spirit. So it even refers back to the spirit there. It even refers um, that they worship God in spirit. So. This thing, the point I want to make is in that scripture is having no confidence in the flesh, but having confidence in the Holy Spirit. It also says um, in Romans 8:26 that the Holy Spirit uh, helps us with our weaknesses when we don't know what we should pray. So see, right there's a problem. You don't know what to pray. You're not going to rely on your own flesh to pray. You're going to rely on the Holy Spirit. But the Spirit Himself makes intercessions for us with all the saints. So right there is the Holy Spirit is in you to pray God's perfect will. God is in you to speak God's language to pray God's will. Okay, And when you pray in the Spirit and you pray God's will, then you will have understanding on how to pray God's will in English. Okay, So you don't have to just pray in the Spirit. You pray in tongue. One of the things I find most helpful when I pray for somebody is I pray in the tongues uh, I pray in the Spirit, and then I trust God as I'm praying in English, I get this revelation knowledge, ah, oh, just stuff starts coming out of my mouth. I pray for this and I pray for that that I hadn't even thought of. So I know that that is the answer to praying in the Spirit. I'm praying in the Spirit, then as I'm praying in English, I'm getting revelation knowledge. And, and it's usually confirmation. The person is usually crying. It's like, how did you know? You know, and that's like, that, you know, and, and, and they're changed by the prayer that I pray in English because I'm revealing knowledge to them and I, as I'm praying. So it's important that you pray in English and you pray in tongues, but pray in tongues first, either at home, <laughs> either at home or quietly under your breath or not even out loud and pray in English. But I believe that it's very important for my experience of praying with people over all these years is praying in tongues. Until I started praying in tongues and then prayed over people in English, I didn't have as much results. Now I'm, I'm, I have the anointing of evangelist, but I have a call in the office of a prophet. And I'm finding out that whether I'm out in the street ministering or ministering in church or in clown or whatever, when I pray in the spirit and then I pray in English, I'm getting prophetic words for the person also. 
in the process of praying or the prophetic word is also part of the prayer in English so it's it's really awesome to pray in tongues praying in tongues is for you and it's for today and my name is Robin Bremer net is my website make sure you subscribe or friend request me or click on my mp3 and download it and save it send an email to friends whatever and I will talk to you tomorrow have a blessed day